Welcome to Running It Back, the lessons learned from sports podcast. I'm Mike Palmer, joined as always by the inimitable, the singular individual, the rara avis, the sine qua non of podcasts, Tarlin Ray. Tarlin, welcome back to the program. Is this the same pod? There were about four words in your intro. What the... Oh, man. You're one of a kind. That's all yes, I'm saying. You guys are too smart. And broke, you they broke the, the mold. Do the countdown next time in a different language. You can, you have more range, range, can't you? Okay. So I'm doing great. We're back. Instead of being every two months, we are at least every three weeks. Maybe we get to every two weeks. And I don't get, know if we can handle seeing each other every week. That we're getting the reps in. Keep the reps going. How am I doing? I first am thinking about you. There's two things I want to talk about. One, when the world truly feels like it's coming in and your skies are orange. Yes. And I'm sure you have ash dumping on your cars because of the fires in Canada. Mm -hmm. And it's way too close to extrapolation. If anyone's seen that show on Apple, yes. how, how yes. are you doing? I'm doing all right. It was a little uh, smog again earlier in the week. And uh, my four-year-old especially was a little troubled by it, but he bounced back well. And fortunately, our particulate matter, our air quality index, AQI, is back in a Just normal something rate. else for you to geek out on. This is trouble. Yeah, well, because I remember there was a void in my life once the COVID numbers were no longer easily accessible so that I could track them every day to figure out how nervous I should be when I walk outside my house. Now that I have another metric to be anxious about, I feel a sense of, of comfort. Quantify all life. We quantify self. I wear an aura ring. I have an Apple watch. I yes. send in yeah. my blood to choose health every three months to be able to track yeah. my various stats. We should just quantify everything. So I'm asking how you're doing because you look terrible. California wildfires, 2019, we have the same orange sky, but not really people. We're talking about people hate California. I still right. remember living in Boston for the first Arctic blast, mm -hmm. the early polar vortex, or in 2014, or in the month of February, we had 93 inches of snow. That's Not a lot of people care, no, no one would cry, but, but when you have what looks like the world coming in and fires and impact from another country leading down into Philly and New York and even yeah. folks that work in Virginia and DC, I, it's kind of gets a little scary. So I just want to hit on that. I'm, I'm, you often ask how I'm doing, I'm yeah. sure you're okay. Well, it's also, you know, when it snows in Atlanta, you know, or when all, all world stops or they when, no it, ice, they, they when there was like a nonstop deluge, the, it, what was it? It was some kind of, some kind of river. It was, it was atmospheric At, river. You gotta, when, if you gotta geek out on the new, you said you were a weather geek. I want you to keep these terms in your head. Right. Atmospheric river. Yeah. And, and El, got, El Nino is here. Just so everyone it's gonna be Oh, it is El Nino. That's, that's. Normally hot. good, but that's the thing. Like when we get hit, this is basically like, you know, August in Brentwood is what happened in, in New York. And like, we're always like, no, that doesn't happen in New York. We have our own set of problems and we're trained on them. But now, you know, by the way, let us know listeners. We're trying to figure out a name for our weather podcast, which may be spinning off soon coming to, uh, to a podcast feed near you. I don't, can't wait. Can't wait. What's well, the weather in LA? It's 70. I got one more though. I want to oh, talk that about was that. The beginning. Go there. Got yeah, it. And then I want to talk about TMI. Okay. And so, you know, you have to make sure you're always, I spend my life in teams calls. Mm -hmm. We also, we now have what is second screening. So people will be in a call. Someone may be sharing a presentation, but the chat is actually where all the action's happening. Yeah. Probably one of the best meetings in, on Friday was just just really serious conversation, but the chat was just nonstop nonsense. I say that because you might still, you can be appropriate. You got to make sure you, is it GIF, GIF? What is it? You got to make sure you put the right GIF, GIF in so it's not, you know, you can do the show me the money potentially with Tom Cruise over the yeah. desk, but maybe it's a little too much of Cuba Gooding Jr. Yeah. in the kitchen Cuba, without a Cuba's shirt on. not in a, and also Cuba's not, he's not in a, a good place. He's not in a good place. Right not a good yeah. place. Yeah. So I shared for Christmas, my mom, 
got me as I had bad feet, broke both my feet, my senior college, I mm. ruptured my Achilles, I've shaved my calf all the time. And all of it, by the way, is connected, just so you know. Yeah. I got a present over Christmas that I actually didn't open. I forgot it was in the box till May. And so I shared, and I'm actually doing it right now. I'm testing it out. I shared on a call that I've got my feet are being massaged at this very moment. Interesting. And just to jump in real quick, you did cramp up earlier, and I didn't realize you had your massage on at the time. Because I moved yeah. my foot. Yeah. I moved my foot during prep. Prep. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Big air quotes. Yeah. I moved my foot the wrong way, so I had my foot caught in the thing that's just massaging, and it fully cramped up. I had to stop the machine. I don't want to share with. I don't want to let you know because I was nope. saving it for the show. That would have been TMI at the time. So is it too much? Just because it's just a little machine under under the desks. No, and, I, think know, I'm, I think like, it's is not. it because of the look in my eye? Like, oh, it's so good. Like right. everyone needs to. It, that's not TMI. So I'm just sharing. As you, I know you work with a lot of clients. Yeah. So to make sure you go in, there's only certain things you can talk about. It's only you can only talk about things that are above the waist, <laughs> things that people can see. First off, thoughts and prayers to your lower extremities. Hopefully all that stuff is, is working out for you. It's feeling great right now. I'm in a really good mood. That's good. That's good. You might get distracted. You're feeling so good. But, uh, but I think it's interesting, the TMI, because, you know, on the other side, people are saying how you have to build trust and you got to show vulnerability. And frequently that's through those, those moments of sharing something a little bit different, a little bit more. So I say... Let people tell you it's TMI and then you dial it back. So you're, you're doing fine, Tarlin. We'll ask her, we'll put a poll out with this. Do people want to hear more about Tarlin's feet? Massaging then, feet, no flatulence. Yeah. If that's fine. That's probably true. Yeah. Don't, when don't I say, say, yeah. Yeah. Lower extremities, meaning like below the knee. Yes. Got it. Agreed. Okay. Agreed. Um, but, okay. but I think last I checked, we're still a sports podcast. Oh, my bad. We're not talking the weather. We're not talking about, although I think recommendations around your quantified self as it relates to your health and your foot care, that again, we're looking at sponsors. If does anyone want to hit us Only sponsored by Aurora already. Or, exactly. But we wanted to talk sports. Like you said at the top, we came back relatively quick from our last show. Our last show was on point enough that... Talking about Jimmy Buckets, talking about Hemi you Butler. Used the word prescient. We're prescient. Yeah. I, I suppose a prescient. Come on. We're prescient. So we talked about Jimmy, Jimmy Buckets. Thankfully, the Celtics didn't come back and upset that apple cart. Uh, being down 3 0, they almost came back. It and... would have been the worst thing in the world if the Celtics came back. We would never, no one ever real set foot in Boston. It, it's, it would have been so obnoxious in Boston, in Massachusetts. So I'm thankful. I'm proud of the way they fought, but I'm thankful we don't have to live through that horror. And we're yeah. still living with the horror of the Red Sox coming back in 2000. Right. Or 2004. But the good news is we were prescient enough talking about that, that we could have probably gotten away with not doing a show on the NBA. However, it is about to wrap up here. Looks like as of last night, the Denver... My my four year old likes to likes the nuggets because he likes chicken nuggets, and we refer to them as the Denver chicken nuggets, chicken nuggets. in, in this household. But uh, the nuggets are looking good. One of the things that's out there is where does the Jokic Murray duo rank among all time duos? That's something that is out there. So assuming they close this out, we may want to talk a little more about that. And then we're also trying to dig in a little more on running it back to history. What does this NBA playoffs remind us of? Stop stalling. You know you want to talk about the 1999 Knicks. Just, just could, forget all this. Talk about it. Go. We're running it back. We yeah. did it before. Let's do a quick moment. Let's get this out of the way. A number yeah. eight seed. Yeah. From the Eastern Conference, yeah. very similar. Right. The Heat, the defensive minded team. You got Spolstra as yeah. the coach, and Gundy is calling these finals. And yeah. he was the coach of your 1999 Knicks. Uh -huh. We were trying to do some Hemi comparisons. Yeah. Can you just, I want you to, it's the floor is yours. I yeah. appreciate what you were doing, trying to 
dodge it. Everyone knows you're Nick's love and, and you yeah. will not win a championship in your lifetime. So just take your shot. Oh, hang on. Yeah. Once I get my aura ring, I'm going to live to 130. So I think I got a shot. <laughs> Although whether the particulate matter gets to all of us by then, that, that's a whole other problem. <laughs> that's weather with a W-H-E. <laughs> exactly. But we've done this twice now. We did it back when we launched back in 2020 when the Heat made it to the NBA Finals in the bubble. We were comparing that to the 99 Knicks because it was also, that was a shortened year due to the lockout. Latrell Sprewell was the singular transcendent talent among, uh, it was more a team of equals, the 99 Knicks, but there were a lot of parallels there. They wound up taking the San Antonio Spurs, Tim Duncan and Tony Parker Spurs, Greg Pop Popovich. No, no Tony Parker. No, no. Uh, Tim Duncan, Robinson, oh. Sean Elliott, Avery, Avery Johnson. Johnson. Mario Ellie. That's that year. Right. Because their first one is pre, pre the big pre, three. Pre big three. Because the other thing people are bringing up is the Tony Parker and Duncan comparison to... Uh, Jokic and yep. Murray, which is another, you know. As you said, we need to wait. Let that breathe. Got to we'll win. Let, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. We may need to do an emergency pod if Jimmy and team somehow miraculously go on a three-game run here, winning two of three in Denver. That would be, that would might require us to do some some crazy, crazy shenanigans to get that covered. But the 99 Knicks, a lot of comparisons to be drawn, especially around the, Jimmy and Sprewell, you mentioned Spolstra and Van Gundy, although nothing against uh, Jeff. I enjoy his commentary, but as far as coaching goes, he's not Spoh. quite no, at, Spoh's, the Spoh's, Spoh's, at, Spoh's against. at the Spo level. And also Spo just getting there, uh, it, you know, is impressive. But yeah, there's some comparisons that can be drawn to the 99 Knicks. We did it. It's cleared. And we can move on. But I think the more interesting comparisons perhaps are more the Nuggets. Are we watching the Denver Chicken Nuggets begin the equivalent of a run towards a dynasty similar to San Antonio? So I think there's some interesting comparisons perhaps on the, the other side of the equation. We already did a show about the Heat. We haven't really gone as deep on the Nuggets, and it does look like Jokic especially, but also the combination of Jokic and Murray is really something the likes of which maybe we haven't seen in a little while, but uh, but I don't know where you want to go with this. Oh, it's so shocking this is where you landed because, as I said, up since 4.30, doing prep, and I was struggling because I just couldn't think about the Allen Houstons, Free Rail, Larry Johnson, Kirk Thomas, Charlie Ward, who won a Heisman team. Ex excuse me, Marcus Camby was on that team. I listen, you didn't. I Patrick Ewing was on that team as well. It's true. Marcus Gammy, number one pick. How many number one picks did you have on that team? Which is kind of crazy. And you can compare it to that of Bio and the Butlers and the Vincent. By the way, Vincent, E. Vincent and, and Struess need to play better. They can't have two points in their backcourt. So I think what was more interesting, some would say they didn't want, if you're in the NBA, you wouldn't want this final. Mm -hmm. Like it's Heat, Peter, fun story. Yeah. Jimmy Butler, you like him as a star. He's not there complaining. He plays hard, but there's no flash. Both teams played hard. People, people just get into the passing lanes. What's really fascinating with the Nuggets, the basketball fans who have played, I mean, you love watching them play. You have a all-world talent in, in Joker who could have been the three-time MVP. I still say Embiid should have been the MVP this year for what he put up. For the regular it's, season. For the regular season such a willing passer and you can see all these dudes just want to play for each other there's yeah. no there are no egos you got kcp of the 2020 world champion Lakers. yeah all now you have aaron gordon who was a number four pick that people thought just he's material he still still fuming for losing that dunk contest but he came in and they'll keep saying on the telecast that aaron gordon has some of the best defensive principles around he's yeah he took down he had to guard Booker. He had to guard Carl Anthony Towns. He had to guard Durant. He had to guard LeBron. And he's banging with Jimmy Butler. And Jimmy Butler is constantly looking for switches so he can get that dude off him because yeah. he can't play bully ball on, on Aaron Gordon. Mm -hmm. So it's a fascinating team. 
where you see, if you listen to interviews, they're just counting down how many games they have left. Right. If they're talking to Jamal yesterday, you're the only player in history that's had more than 10 assists in your first four games. And he's like, I can't get assists without my teammates. Right. If they're hyping up Aaron Gordon and how well he plays, Joker never calling himself the best player. And you don't think it's fake. Yeah. Right. And so you talk about people wanting to go play for LeBron because he's a willing passer, because they know you can find, especially if you're a shooter. You, how could you not want to play with Joker? Yeah. He, you, you're always open. He's got eyes behind his back of his head. So to me, there is a, there's a chemistry thing. And we talk about culture, but it's also chemistry. Mm -hmm. You can see there are guys, there's the DeAndre Jordans, the Thomas Bryants, the Reggie Jacksons, a bunch of dudes on this bench. They only play eight guys. And one of those is a rookie who won the NCAA championship last year. Yeah. Who's, so, who, who's out playing a starter in Michael Porter Jr. So like this team does have, it's, what's interesting is they even have a player who's a bit of a head case who's kind of imploding in front of her eyes with only an eight man roster and they're still Michael Porter can't guard you. God, get in the stance, man. He just, he's so athletic. Just get in the stance, teach him how to play some heat. Yeah. Anyways. So as I'm thinking about the chemistry and how boring, this is a boring team. Pick and roll, high pick and roll. They move the ball really well. Yeah. Choker doesn't, he's just doing little baby hooks in the lane. Yeah. All that. And you look back to the, go to the Spurs. Oh, and also never won a championship. Then you go to the Spurs, mm -hmm. never won a championship. Pop had fired Brian Hill as the coach after they had Duncan tough right. an injury season and they got the number one pick again. So you got the Twin Towers. Right. You got Sean Elliott, who was at one point the number three pick. You know, remember he's fighting through a kidney disease. Yeah. Uh, Avery Johnson, who's that? Uh, Ryan Johnson. Looks like a great his, smile. I wish we could do his voice, man. It's awesome. But I mean, he is, he is not the tallest dude, but he will come at you. That was definitely, and that's an early Popovich, and he hadn't coached at all. Right. But that's the early look at chemistry. And there was one, as I was doing research on the Spurs, which really sort of clicked for me. It's the same way as I read about the Nuggets. They like to hang out all the time. They play video games all the time. They go eat together. They just like being around each other, even yeah. though there's eight new players on that team this year. Mm -hmm. There's a picture of the Spurs after winning the championship, after beating, who they beat that year? Uh, they beat oh, the New York. After beating the Knicks. Yeah. Thanks, man. After beating the Knicks in the gentleman's sweep. Yes. Winning the last game, 78-77. They're on a plane. Duncan, Robinson, Mario Elliott. I'm forgetting the last guy. And there's it's big laptops with big headphones. And they're playing StarCraft. Nice. And nerding out. They call it nerding out a real-time strategy game. So imagine you have pictures of people playing cards and doing other things. But this is what this team collective group wanted to do together just fascinating you're not seeing folks going off to the club you're not seeing you know tons of champagne it's just like hey right. this is this is an expression of us playing an early land game where they're playing head-to-head -head because there is no online and it's also because paintball really hadn't exploded yet <laughs> and, and that was later on in That's Duncan's good, career good, good good pull so i just we talked about culture maybe it's the other c it's chemistry you still see it with the heat they're not giving up Tyler Hero going down is the same equivalent of Patrick Ewing going down. So just hoping to be able to rally around their start. We don't need another hero. Shout out to <laughs> Tina Turner. Gone too soon, even though she lived a full life. She was a baller. Yeah. So that's what I focus on. I really appreciate this team. They do not have even Joker, even though Joker should be, he's not a star. Jamal Murray, he's a guy who averaged 16 points over his career in the regular season, shoots about 45% field goal, 37% three. Mm -hmm. 87 from free throw. Well, he balls out in the playoffs. Yes. Playoffs. 24 points a game. His All his field goal, field goal three-point and free throw percentage goes up as well as assists and rebounds. So you just love watching guys, especially a team that was the number one seed throughout the year, who scuffled late in the year, who was with a coach and Mike Malone, who comes from an unbelievable coaching tree, which we talked about last time. I just like, I like teams who like to be around each other and are willingly sacrificing for each other. And that's how you win. And that, that to me was, if you look at the early blueprint for the Spurs, that's the Spurs. Now, 
well, Calvin Booth, I don't know if you remember Calvin Booth as a player, just a lanky dude who's the GM for uh, the Nuggets. And Malone have the same bond at Boofer, 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 as Popovich have. Don't, you're making, this is something, I'm the kid who said, I need to learn how to enunciate and I'm trying to speak to people. So, hey, just give me credit. I woke up today and had the courage to speak into a mic. Will they have the same bond? But anyways, that's why I riff on watching this team. It truly, forget Dynasty, they play a lovely game. I love the way they play for each other. Yeah, exactly. And to me, the interesting connection, and I was trying to draw this a little bit on the Jimmy Butler show, is that I think in terms of team dynamics, Butler and the Heat remind me a little more of Jordan and the Bulls. And Jokic and the... Nuggets remind me more of Duncan and the Spurs. And those two never really went head to head when they were both at the peak of their powers. Jordan left in 98. And that's the other reason why 99 was both an opportunity for the Knicks, a missed opportunity as an eight seed, but also really a passing of the torch in some ways. If you look at dynasties from the Bulls to the next dynasty in the NBA, which was the Spurs. Perhaps we're on the precipice. We're on the threshold of something different. The thing that I think is really transcendent is Jokic's game. Even though I think he's similar to Duncan in that your best player is also your big man and your best player is unselfish. But Duncan's unselfishness was still delivered through his skills which were not as transcendent in terms of court awareness and passing, where I've never seen a player from the center position, with perhaps the exception of Bill Walton, who I've seen some glimpses of him. And folks also talk about a young Sabonis, where when your center, when the biggest guy on the court is able to, it's kind of an equivalent of the high post, but it's actually more like a point guard dribbling into the high post. Not more like he. Dribble, he is consistently pushing the ball to court. We have two out of bio and Joker. If you look, they get the ball and they're leading the break. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. And he can shoot the three. So like for me, I think in addition to the culture and the chemistry stuff, the ties back to the Spurs and Popovich and all those things, I, I agree with all that. But I think there's something more to be understood about Joker in terms of developing talent And really thinking about it from a no limits perspective, where back in the day, big guys were taught to play with their back to the basket. They were taught to rebound, box out. Those are big fundamentals. And that even was Duncan's nickname. (laughs) The crazy thing is Joker has the fundamentals. When you watch him post these guys up, the way he's sealing them off, the way he's boxing out. Best footwork since the large one. Yeah. And his, and his defense needs to get better but he strikes me and it has already wait, wait, gotten better just sure he's not gonna block shots i want to get to duncan on comparing joker and his passing to duncan and his defense joker yesterday had five either kick balls or off his yes. knees because of his because of his hand and he stripped three balls so right. he's not he's and never his, gonna be fast and his feet because don't forget the europeans they got the soccer sorry excuse me the football skills so he's played Ooh, he's we played a lot we just lost a lot of listeners <laughs> i thought you have you not been watching ted lasso in the last episode I, he called oh this spoiler not Oops. there yet i am watching i'm only a few episodes away what yeah what are you doing what we are you could doing do your life you gotta save them you gotta save them like a fine wine like a greg pop of like a popovich oh it's cabernet me. man come on let's let's not, not fool around not we're low not we're low so <laughs> one thing is if you think about Joker's brilliance, just his passing ability. I saw a recent article about blocks mm-hmm. and how Dwight Howard for the longest time led the league in blocks. Mm-hmm. And there's a stat. They, of course, there's a new stat, and I don't remember the, the actual stat, but it's, it's call, let's call them high-value blocks. Yeah. And despite the fact that Howard led the league in blocks, majority of large percentage of blocks would go out of bounds. Right. Nothing you could do with him. So the other team, yeah, sure, some intimidation. and right. ah, But they had another possession. Duncan, for years, led the league in high-value blocks. So he was 
not only the best player, but often on the all defensive team. He may have less blocks, but when he did, he would either tip it to someone else, tip yeah. it to himself. Also I, known as Bill Russell blocks. Sure. But I like it, even though it's on different sides, both of them are highly unselfish and Joker is just otherworldly when it comes to passing and seeing the game. I think Duncan had that same feel on the defensive side. He's 28 years old is the other thing to remember about him. This is the prime. Yeah. Him and Giannis, who I think is his contemporary, who I would look at a little more than Embiid because Embiid's had a lot of problems in terms of getting and staying healthy and actually competing and winning at an elite level. But there is a new generation of European players, you know, international players. Tim Duncan was international, even though it's easy to forget the the Virgin Islands, I guess, kind of count as international. But the idea that these players are coming in with a different sense of humility and sense of appreciation for getting to where they got. And then the thing about Jokic that is so impressive to me is how much better he is continuing to get. And there is, you know, there's a lot of talk about first round draft picks and who was selected first. The metric that I think is more interesting, and this relates to leadership and team and chemistry, is are you improving? Are you getting better? And are you able to work on aspects of your game to continue to improve? Keep in mind, when he was first drafted, his body fat index was very different than it is today. And he had all the skills. He had the intangibles that I like to talk about. But what I think has surprised everyone is that internal motor that he has to continue to get better, to continue to work on things. And then the last thing, which is maybe getting back to that intangible piece, is he genuinely is selfless. I don't like the term servant leadership because I think it almost, it, it still has that hierarchy involved where like suddenly you're the servant as opposed to the leader. But I think he is the best player on the court and he's also genuinely focused on making all these other players better. Aaron Gordon would not have gotten to where he is, I don't think, unless the chemistry was as good as it is. Jamal Murray, I think, was able to grow with him because of the chemistry that the two of them had together. And, you know, we're in this age of advanced metrics. We're wearing aura rings. We're doing saber metrics all the time. I think within Jokic, Jokic's career, maybe we can start to quantify some of those formerly intangible qualities. Court sense is another one or passing ability. I don't think those things have necessarily translated into quantifiable stats. But I think he's off the charts when it comes to that. The last thing that I did want to make sure that we talked about today, though, was dynamic duos in the NBA. And where does where did Jokic and Murray stack up relative to other dynamic duos in NBA history? What would Shannon Sharp say right now? One thing to say. Now on first take, right? I just saw that. The NBA All-Star game needs to be fixed in the reason we know is when Joker's a 23rd of 24 picks for your team, there's something wrong. I'll just leave it there. Yeah. Dynamic duos. We said at the beginning of the show that we need Jamal and Joker to win. Yeah. If they win, we will then run it back to other dynamic duos, Kobe and Shaq and others. But I refuse to do it before they finish. Okay. I'm going to do this right here. And I did this earlier. It's still right. This was, I guess, maybe even before the finals that they had already passed Stockton and Malone. And it's an easy, it's an easy swing. But I mean, why not? If you're going to, if you're going to knock, you're going to hit somebody when they're down, it might as well be Carmelo to John Stockton. Oh, I mean, what is he that? Please defend. There's, go ahead, go ahead, Governor. Please defend. No, I defend mean, Stockton the, and, and, and Malone. Malone, third most points in NBA history. Stockton, the assist leader. But do you look at all time stats, or two, do you look time, at two time NBA finalists, um, two time NBA loser? I so I said you want to prematurely have a conversation about duos. Yeah. So 
That's a great, that will be on. You're not list. prepped. I got you. Now it's all coming together for me. I see. You need to go back into the bunker. You need to load up Hoops GPT. Do, do, do you get see, the research team working on it? I any understand. scratches I about understand. duos on my page? Yeah. yeah. So, or tri trios. You mentioned the big, you're, the big you're not gonna. Throw, you're not going to get the prepper. Throw to, Morton in there? You, to just start babbling when That's I good. have other things and deeper cuts than just yeah. throwing out, responding to your chum. All right. So we're going to pause on that and then we're going to, we're wrapping soon, but we do have to, I know you love this topic. Tarlin went on to divert the conversation into one about golf of all things and the live golf tour, which we had talked about a few weeks ago. If you're interested in that, we'll include a link to our previous conversation about live. And then we're also going to release a short episode based on the conversation that was about to ensue here. We'll pick up next with, our wrap up of the NBA show and then be on the lookout for more of our takes on lessons learned from the shenanigans involving the PGA tour and live golf. We'll pick up here with the wrap up of our NBA episode. So trying to end on a more positive note, try to find positive lessons learned. I'm going to spend more time looking at Joe Kitch's game and try to stay hopeful. We have a Monday, which hopefully is not the last day of basketball. I'm hoping for one more fight out of the heat, even though I want the Nuggets to win. You know, like just like the team, just give us one more game. We need a hero to come make at least we need someone else to make a basket on the heat other than Butler and out of bio. And as we wrap up here, I'll just come back to that point. We don't need another hero. What we need are gentlemen, gentlemen like Jokic and Murray. And as someone who has dabbled with a little bit of legal sports book here in New York, we also need a gentleman sweep so which, that which sports book are you using just future sponsor my sports book, Tarlin. I'm glad you asked. My sports book is Caesar's sports book. Welcome to the empire. Win or lose. Every wager gives you more with Caesar's rewards. Nuggets in five. We'll oh, see. I, how I, I, gonna... I didn't know you had a little action on this. I would a little I bit, a little bit of action. The bigger action was on the Nuggets just to win, but I did also throw a little bit on them in both four and five. So let's see if five comes in. Thanks as always, Tarlin. Thanks for our listeners. We are back, rubbing it back. Let us know how we're doing. We'll be back with more soon. Thanks as always for listening.